Hey everyone, welcome back with Be No Mac, where today we will compare two often overlooked titles in their respective franchises. WWF WrestleMania 2000 exclusive to the N64, and of course the original SmackDown title for the PlayStation 1. As usual, we look at the time of release, the sales, gameplay, roster, single player modes, creation options, and any extras either game has to offer to give those watching a hopefully objective view at either two Aki titles or how the Aki titles stand up compared to other wrestling games. Aki content every Sunday, so remember to like and subscribe and ring the notifications bell to be reminded of future reviews, playthroughs, and of course, more comparisons. Enough stalling though, let's break it down. Alright, let's start off with the history again. WrestleMania 2000 was released first to American audiences on November 18th of 1999. The Aki Corporation developed it exclusively for the N64 console. It was originally released in Europe first on October 12th, 1999. WWF SmackDown was on the PSX only and released in North America on March 2nd of 2000 and was developed by Ukes. This title was first seen in European countries April 14th of 2000. Both titles today were published by the once legendary THQ. While they were released a few months apart, the rosters were based on relatively the same time. 1999 was the main focus here for both, which is funny considering they are synonymous with 2000. Aki vs Yuke's will be a main focal point of these comparisons, and this episode will be no different. These games are similar to their sequels that I covered before. SmackDown is an arcade-like, extremely fast-paced game with simple controls and unrealistic physics. Opponents don't stay down for long even after finishers and weapons barely do any damage. SmackDown was the first WWF game and I believe the first wrestling game to ever have backstage areas. WrestleMania 2000 on the other hand is a slower affair with more emphasis on grapples and replicating a real life match pace where you start off with wear down holes that lead into signature moves near the end of the match. Smackdown features this as well with its groggy grapples being the more powerful moves of the wrestler, but the momentum meter for the games are completely different. In Smackdown you can reverse easily and the timing never changes. However, the attitude meter in WrestleMania directly affects how easy it is to perform reversals. Also in Mania, the weapons do more damage, but they fall through the floor when dropped. No backstage areas are available either, and even the ability to access the stage is unavailable. In SmackDown 1, simply executing moves successfully and doing taunts will build up your momentum meter, and it never goes down. You can have up to 5 finishers at a time depending on how many you allow yourself to have when selecting a superstar. Whereas in WrestleMania 2000 the Aki formula is, it's pretty much momentum in the way that a real life match works. For example if you're doing poorly, you're not reversing, and you are taking quite a bit of a beating, your meter slowly drains until you go into the danger mode. However if you're the aggressor in the situation, your momentum meter will gradually increase until it gets to orange. Once in orange, your meter will start blinking, which you can then taunt, which will then allow you to access a number of different variety of positions that you can then use your special meter in for a short period of time for as many times as you want. In SmackDown 1, every superstar has only one finishing maneuver they can pull off. However, as previously mentioned, in WrestleMania 2000 there are a variety of situations that you can pull your special move off in. For example, you have front facing finishers, back facing finishers, turnbuckle finishers, even Irish whip rebound finishers. Pretty much any situation that there is in this game, there's a way to do a special in it. Pretty much this all comes down to your personal preference. Do you like the fast paced, archaic style of SmackDown? Or 
Do you like the slow, plotting, realistic match type affair in WrestleMania 2000? Both of these games are based off of the 1999 roster of the World Wrestling Federation. Mania came out first though and still had loose ties to late 1998, where SmackDown got rid of a few talents that weren't relevant at the time anymore. The original SmackDown featured only a total of 36 superstars, which at the time felt a bit light. For comparison, WWF Attitude that released a year earlier featured 42. There were others that can be created by finishing calendar years in season mode, but it's pure cosmetic here. Superstars such as the Blue Meanie, Steven Richards, Ivory, Jacqueline, Pat Patterson, Gerald Briscoe, Prince Albert, Midian, Viscera, and Stephanie McMahon are all creatable only. You can also tell that a lot of them didn't even get past the texture phase, as some are clearly unfinished, but I'm assuming they wanted to focus on the sequel. WrestleMania 2000 features a total of 57. There were quite a few wrestlers that were cut and the British Bulldog was intended for release, but wasn't featured in either game. Megastars at the time were featured in both games though, such as Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, Undertaker, Triple H, The Hardys, Mankind, Acolytes, Brood, and so on and so forth. Superstars exclusive to SmackDown were Devon and Bubba Ray Dudley. If you count those you create, Stevie Richards could be exclusive to SmackDown at the time as well. WrestleMania 2000 features more exclusives including Jeff Jarrett, Draws, Thrasher, Chaz, Meat, as well as Too Much members Scott Taylor and Brian Christopher. Non-wrestlers Terry Runnels, Michael Hayes, and Jim Ross are available along with hidden characters Do Love, Cactus Jack, Shawn Michaels, and Jerry the King Lawler. There are more that are only creatable in SmackDown, but I'll cut Yuke some slack as they all at least had their facial likenesses included. The final notes of the rosters worth mentioning is that Sean Stasiak and Jeff Jarrett were meant to be in the original SmackDown along with Goldust who was canned for both games. The heavy hitters were available for both games here so no one truly got screwed though. Both games on offer have the option to create superstars and pay-per-views. SmackDown allows up to only four custom wrestlers, which even at the time was pretty appalling. You have no custom parts, only being able to choose three template parts for your head, body, and legs. Then you must compete in preseason to pick your moves and are solely based on attribute points, so you can't even have free reign of your moveset either. I get that what they were going for, but they didn't seem to have the time to flesh this out or even really make it halfway decent. WrestleMania 2000 lets you create up to 16 wrestlers with 4 outfit options. You can edit names, music, full appearance, moves, fighting style, and rivals for a deep experience for the time. You can also edit the wrestlers on the roster as well, being able to change attires or music but not their movesets. You can also clone wrestlers onto other slots too. Create a pay-per-view in SmackDown and let you pick from a variety of match types makes you have 6 matches per card. You can put titles up for grabs and once they play out, you can see the top 10 matches and events in the records of this mode. WrestleMania 2000 lets you have up to 15 matches in this mode, with belts as options and the choice to have name matches too. You can have up to 3 saved at the time with the option to replay or continue at your own discretion. The final noteworthy option is in WrestleMania, you can create a belt using the templates of the pre-existing belts featured in WWE at the time. Once again, pretty similar modes, but they offer very different execution of these modes. Both of these games feature a season mode, but they differ in a few ways. SmackDown has the officially titled season that has two options. Preseason is meant only for custom wrestlers that need personality traits 
and move upgrades before being allowed to be sent into the main season modes. All custom wrestlers need to finish the full year of preseason to be allowed to compete in the regular season. Preseason has a lot more personalized cutscenes and features some more names such as the previously mentioned Stevie Richards and Blue Meanie in cutscenes who didn't make it as playable characters in the final. How you interact with superstars along with wins and losses directly affect your character traits. Once you start the season, you can select any superstar with up to four players, or none at all. You can remove some as well, but need at least 32 entries. Then, random cutscenes and matches play out on a monthly basis with only 12 match cards for the year. Superstars have health that's displayed before matches that can be affected during cutscenes if someone is jumped backstage. Also, after every match is an audience score. Cutscenes are basic and usually don't involve any story elements, but were pretty cool at the time. Title matches are recorded here with opportunities being present based on your rank. WrestleMania 2000 features Road to WrestleMania mode, where you start in April as well and must make your way to WrestleMania of that year in hopes of becoming World Heavyweight Champion. Your stats are tracked here as well and is more of a personal season rather than SmackDown's all-encompassing season. Both games feature the big five pay-per-views at the time, including the King of the Ring, SummerSlam, Survivor Series, Royal Rumble, and WrestleMania 15. WrestleMania has you compete on four shows for the month and a fifth if a pay-per-view is present. Road to WrestleMania also features an actual end goal as well, as the game wants you to win the Royal Rumble and win the world title at WrestleMania. Anything else, and the game tells you to try again, even if you have other belts and a match on the card. Both games overall allow you to choose your own paths whilst recording your progress along the way, but they both take different approaches in doing so, making them completely different, unique experiences. Honestly, both games don't really have any side content aside from the main single player campaigns. Uh, well, there is the King of the Ring mode that is in both games. Uh, in SmackDown, this is the simple 8-man tournament that we see on television. In WrestleMania 2000, we now have the option of up to 16 superstars to choose from, as well as single and tag team variations of the tournament. And finally, you can put the belt up for grabs in the King of the Ring mode in WrestleMania 2000. But other than that, that's really it. These games were the first WWF games developed by both of these companies and laid the groundwork for the sequels to become legendary. So that's really it for this section. Both of these games, like I said, really laid the groundwork for SmackDown 2 and No Mercy. But even with that, these games are legendary in their own right and beloved by hardcore fans becoming cult classics in the wrestling game space. Both have a lot of heart and love poured into them and deserve more recognition for just being the hidden gems that they are. Solid gameplay from the get-go with pretty decent season modes to boot while featuring the best of the Attitude Era all in one package. The personal choice here all comes down to preference of fast-paced, non-stop action or a more methodical, realistic pace for your wrestling game playtime. You guys let me know, are you a SmackDown PS1 fanatic or are you a WrestleMania 2000 N64 junkie? Regardless of your pick though, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for weekly Aki content including more comparisons, reviews, playthroughs, and more. Ring the bell for daily notifications and remember to have a nice day.